When working with Kotlin coroutines in a typical mobile app architecture, most of the time we'll launch a new coroutine from our view model using the view model scope and call some other business logic function that will do the actual work for us. Often we will declare these functions as suspend because these will, for example, call other suspend functions on a deeper layer. But when you try to launch another coroutine within such a suspend function, although we seem to be in a coroutine context, you will soon see that your IDE reminds you that this is not possible. But why does your IDE complain? Because with this assumption, we're confusing the coroutine context with the coroutine scope. To call functions like async or launch, we need to be inside a coroutine scope and this is not the case just by declaring a function as suspend. Let's quickly recall what a coroutine scope is about. A coroutine scope manages the life cycle of coroutines. We can not only launch a single coroutine in such a scope but multiple. The coroutine scope makes sure that the principle of structured concurrency is implemented properly. It does it by acting as a parent to which created child coroutines are bound. The behavior of launched coroutines when one fails depends on the respective parent coroutine scope they are launched in. We can differentiate between two types of scopes and summarize the behavior in short like in the following way. First, the default or regular scope. If one job fails, it propagates the error to its parent coroutine scope it got launched in. The scope then will be cancelled and with that all other remaining child coroutines as well. As long as the exception is not catched, it will be propagated upwards the scope hierarchy. Second, the supervisor scope behavior. If one job fails, the error will be propagated to the parent coroutine scope as well. But the key difference here is that the parent coroutine scope itself will not be cancelled and therefore all other remaining child coroutines continue. Now that we know about the coroutine scope, let's come back to our suspend function. Maybe at some point you already created such a coroutine scope yourself via instantiation of its constructor. But currently we are already inside a coroutine context which we want to use for this coroutine scope. No worries, this can be easily done by two suspend functions exactly for this purpose coroutine scope and supervisor scope. Both of these functions take the current coroutine context of the suspend function and create a new coroutine scope. Let's see how they work in practice and what happens if one of the coroutines inside these scopes fails. To showcase this, we are back with another example app. This time we are showing not candies but animals. Let's go to the view model and here we can already see that just as we discussed, we are launching here a new coroutine by the view model scope. And by that, we are calling the load animals of the animal service. So let's go into that. And as you can see here, we also access another function, which is the load animals from the animal repository. And as you can also see, we are correctly here catching cancellation exceptions and rethrowing them and also return a empty list on a regular exception. So let's take a look at the animal repository or to be more specific at its implementation. Here we can now see that we are not loading all animals by one API but two APIs. So we have a cat API and a dog API. Both of them are launched inside a async function and um, this deferred will then be weighted in two functions which are also wrapped in try catch blocks. So the assumption here is that even though one of these requests fails, in the end we will have at least one list of animals if yeah, at least one of them succeeds, of course. And if we now um, look into the cat API, we can see, oh, this implementation seems to throw an exception. Let's keep that in mind. The dog API, on the other hand, if we go into that, is returning a um, list of dogs with a small delay, which is but a little longer than the cats API. So let's see what happens if we just launch our app. Hmm, okay, this is weird. Something went wrong. But what went wrong? Let's take a look at the log cat here. And if we, if we scroll a little bit up, we can see cats deferred failed, which is expected because it throws an exception. But then also the dog prefers failed with a job cancellation exception, but um, only the cats deferred failed, why also the dog? 
And that is because we are using here a coroutine scope. And just as I explained in the introduction, if one of those coroutines fails here, also all other child coroutines of the scope will also be cancelled, which we just saw. So with this coroutine scope, we can access functions like async or we could also launch another coroutine here. But because we are in a regular coroutine scope, the cat's deferred fails and will um, notify the coroutine scope, hey, I failed. And the coroutine scope will then just cancel all other jobs that are still running. So let's see what happens if we're not using coroutine scope, but we switch to supervisor scope, which is the other function I um, explained. Maybe let's quickly have a look into the function. We can see that we have here first the input parameter, which is just a block function, and it has a coroutine scope as type receiver. So by that, we can access functions like async or launch. And we can also see that we are launch or creating uh, here a supervisor coroutine, which on the other hand overrides this child cancelled. And it will always return false, which is in the end responsible for its behavior that the child coroutines are not cancelled. So if we come back here now and try to rerun this example, we can now see loading spinner appears and now we get those docs. So let's quickly also look into the um, log cat here. As expected, the cat's deferred failed, but this just um, yeah, provides the empty list here and the rest of the code um, executes as expected because in this case, the deferred doesn't cancel the parent coroutine scope and the doc um, deferred can succeed. So let's have a quick wrap up about those two functions, when to use which. If you want to have this uh, regular behavior that if one of your coroutines fails, all other coroutines will be canceled and also the um, cancellation exception will be rethrown to your parent scope, then choose coroutine scope. On the other hand, if you have an example like we had here in this example project, you are good to go to use the supervisor scope, which will um, avoid canceling all other running coroutines. I hope you had some takeaways. Like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell, and I hope to see you soon.